And the moment that you hand me the leash, she jumps up on her back paws and like bites a fly out of the air. And then she jumps up onto my lap and, and like literally like sits in my lap. And I was like, I've got Gypsy. <laughs> Before I get into the story, I want to say a quick thank you and give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Yahoo Mail. Yahoo Mail is fully screen reader accessible to voiceover and talkback, so yes, we love an accessible queen. Also, if you are low vision or visually impaired in any way, you can adjust the size of the print or the font on the app, as well as invert colors while keeping the photo color intact, which is so important. So those are some of the things that they do in terms of accessibility, which I'm really excited about. You guys know I would never choose to partner with an app if it was not fully accessible. I actually spoke with somebody from the Yahoo Mail team that is blind herself and works with the end engineers so that was super great to see that they actually really do have a focus on it and hire people with disabilities so thank you for that for anybody else who's interested in Yahoo Mail it's really cool I've been using it for the last little while you don't just have to use it if you have like a Yahoo email address there's two features that I've been loving the most since starting to use Yahoo Mail and that's the unsubscribe feature as we all know on this channel I do a lot of online shopping and a lot of reviewing of online companies and the moment you order from online companies they add you to their mailing subscription list which is super annoying and really clutters your inbox so you can actually divide it and put the subscriptions in one area and unsubscribe from all of them in like one fell swoop which is super helpful the other thing you can do is have all your deals and coupons added into one spot so it'll like populate all of the deals and coupon codes that come in from websites into one area so you can quickly find all your deal codes really easily when you need to if you're like at checkout out at the grocery store or something. Basically, Yahoo Mail is the easiest way to keep your inbox clean and organized. And for me as a screen reader user, that is super important. So that's the thesis. Check it out. I'll link more information down below if you want to try Yahoo Mail yourself. And thank you to Yahoo Mail for sponsoring this video. Today is December 3rd, which means today is International Day of Persons with Disabilities. So from one disabled girl to another, happy International Day of Persons with Disabilities. And if you're not disabled, but you wanna learn about our community, then welcome, we're happy to have you. Today, I had this like really fun, cool video idea in mind and LA weather did not come to play today. It was like, hey, we're gonna have torrential downpours and a crazy storm. At one point, you guys, they were calling for snow in LA. We have palm trees we don't do snow so that video idea kind of got squashed but it's fine because I'm now like sitting here cozied up snuggly with my cup of tea by the way this is from my brand new line of merch it says I don't spill tea I drink it so link below to check out all of my merch so Gallup has been feeling so snuggly since he woke up this morning. I think it is like the rainy, cold weather we're having. He's like, mommy, hug me, snuggle me. And I was like, you know, you guys, you know Gallup very well. You see him all the time. And I've talked about my first guy, Doug Gypsy, before, but it makes me sad that you guys never got to know her because she really was life-changing for me. I, I can't even like begin to express. I feel like she helped me gain more self-worth, self-confidence, self-love. She made me feel more independent, more confident. She made me feel more myself. She empowered me in so many ways and she led the way for Gallup to come into my life. And so it really, it does make me sad that you guys never got to like officially meet her because she was a very special, quirky, funny, diva dog princess extraordinaire. And I think the story of how we met kind of captures her personality in a really special way. And I just felt like I wanted to share it with you today. So I met Gypsy back in 2007 and I actually met her before I went to go get a guide dog, which is crazy. So I, from the time I was eight years old, told my parents I was gonna get a guide dog when I was 13 years old. Like that was my goal. I wanted to get my guide dog as young as I could, which at the time, was 13 years old. The guide dog school that I get my dogs from, the Mira Foundation in Quebec, they now allow you to go 11 and up, I believe, but at the time it was 13 and up. So I was like, 13, I'm getting my dog. So March break of grade seven, I went for my examination. I got on a train by myself and traveled to the guide dog school in Quebec from my hometown in Toronto and had a number of tests. They basically look at your O&M or orientation and mobility skills, which is how well you use your white cane. They look 
at your auditory skills, your listening skills, your tactile feedback, your maturity, your independence, your confidence with navigation, all of these things take into account. And they also look at how well you interact with dogs. And I grew up very scared of dogs. I had a fear of dogs my whole life because, you know, animals are unpredictable at the best of times, especially like most people's pets aren't well-trained like service dogs are. And when you can't see them and you're like a really petite girl like myself, it was just always really scary. So that was what I was most nervous for was like meeting the dogs and passing that part of the examination. But they took me into the kennel and they brought out Gypsy. And they had no idea at the time that Gypsy would end up being my guide dog either. Like. It wasn't like pre-planned, like they were like, oh, this is the one we think we'll give her. No, like this was March. I didn't get my dog till July. Gypsy wasn't even fully trained yet. And for some reason, the trainer brought Gypsy out of the kennel. Keep in mind, they have 300 dogs, like about 300 dogs on campus at all times. So the fact that they, of like the 300 dogs they had, for some reason ended up pulling Gypsy out of the kennel. It's just meant to be, you know? And they brought her out. And like I said, she wasn't fully trained yet. And she was ram. Bunctious. She was so full of energy. She was running all over the place. She was trying to jump on me. She was licking me. She was a huge licker. Like she loved giving kisses and she was just acting a straight fool and she scared me. I was scared. I was like really overwhelmed by her. I th I found her too much. Like I, I didn't feel comfortable around her, which, you know, she would go on to guide me for seven years safely and comfortably. So again, it's like kind of funny to think about. And so they ended up bringing out a black lab named Soy I ended up taking Soya from the kennel to the house where we actually sleep during training. So that night I had Soya in my room. I was in charge of like feeding him, taking him out for bathroom breaks, taking care of him, commanding him to like sit, lay down, that kind of thing. Basically they were observing how well I interact with dogs and how comfortable I am around them. And can I handle the responsibility of like taking him out? getting him water, getting him food, all that kind of stuff. I loved Soya, he was super chill, really low key. And I was like, this is my dog, like Soya's gonna be mine. And then at the end of the training session or the examination session, thankfully the final day when I was packing up my stuff to go home, the O&M instructor and the guide dog trainer came in and told me that I quote, passed with flying colors and I was accepted to the July training program. So that was my March break. And then I had to wait a couple months before I got to go back in July, which was killing me. I was like so ready to toss the cane out and get the guide dog. And I just, it was, it was like achieving that goal I set for myself when I was eight years old and started using my cane almost full time. I think eight or nine, I started using it full time. So it was like, achieving this goal that I had worked so hard towards because you don't just get a guide dog when you go blind. There's a lot of work that goes into it. You do have to put a lot of effort into honing your cane skills, which is why I tell people if you're blind and you're embarrassed to use your cane, guess what? The only way you're ever not gonna use your cane is by getting a guide dog. And guess what? The only way you're gonna get a guide dog is by nailing your cane skills. So you better embrace the cane and all that it does for you in keeping you safe and that cane, if you work really hard, you work your butt off to get the skills and use it to the best of your ability, then you can toss it away faster and get the guide dog. So it's really worth just putting in the effort and embracing the cane and also realizing when you're walking around with a cane, people know what's wrong. When you're just walking into things and injuring yourself, hurting others, knocking things over, they don't realize that you're doing it because you have a disability. So for so many reasons, it's really important to just embrace the cane. But I was like, okay, I've embraced the cane, I've owned it, I've worked it up till now, I'm ready to like get rid of it and trade it in for the dog. So finally, July came around and it was just like, oh, I was so nervous, but I was so excited. And it was a really tough month for me. I started losing a lot more of my vision during that month. I was a six hour train ride away from my family and friends. I was the only fluent English speaker and non-French speaker because Quebec is a French speaking part of Canada. I was the youngest by a lot. Most of the other students were over from France. So they like really were really French. And yeah, it was very difficult. I would have to get up at 6 a.m. in order to like get dressed, have breakfast, get my dog ready. And we'd be training for like eight hours a day, walking around all over Quebec, trains, buses, oh my God, shopping malls, anything you could think of 
So yeah, it was pretty intense, but I was really ready for it. I felt really excited and I knew it would all be worth it, which it totally was. But going in, I, I had to pack, like I had to go buy new sneakers because they said like, don't wear flip flops because you'll be walking all the time and the dogs will be on your paw, on your feet and stuff. And so I bought new sneakers for it. I got like a bunch of snacks, my favorite snacks that I packed. I packed my daisy player and a bunch of audiobooks with me. I was set, I was ready. And the way the Mira Foundation works is they don't pre-match. So a lot of guide dog schools pre-match dog to owner. They're like based on their like walking skills and the questionnaire they filled out and the interviews we've had with them and all of that. They're like, this dog is gonna be like, Gypsy is going to be Molly's dog. Mira doesn't do that. You're a part of the matching process. So for the first few days that you're at the school during your training session, they bring you to the kennel and you each work different dogs. First you do straight up and down the kennel. So it's like a long straight hallway and you do straight up and down to, to focus on walking speed. And then once they do that, they do an obstacle course where they put like pylons out and they pull these sticks from the, that are attached to the wall, like these big poles and the dog guides you through. So they see how well you interact in that capacity and they usually have you kind of sit with the dog for half an hour or so commanding it talking to it playing with it seeing how your personalities connect while other people are doing the obstacle courses so it's a big process and when I went for Gypsy they tried me with three different dogs I was like where's Soya I'm ready for Soya and they told me that Soya had already actually graduated and been given out in the class before mine so I was really sad because I had built like that bond with him this was like my first adventure into a guide dog was with Soya and so I was like, what do you mean? Like that was my guide dog and I was sad, but they're like, no, we have like lots of dogs that are gonna be great for you. So I worked with a yellow lab named Java, J-A-V-A. -A. I worked with a black lab named Cleo, C-L-E-O. And I worked with a black and white Labernese named Gypsy. And I was like, no, like Cleo's my girl, Cleo's my dog. And so at the end of working with the three dogs, they came up to me and they're like, you know, Molly, who do you feel like is your dog? Like what, what's your top choice? And I said, Cleo, Cleo's my top choice and Gypsy is my second choice. Java doesn't feel right for me. And they were like, okay, you know, thanks. We'll take that into consideration. But Gypsy had other things in mind. So a couple of other people were working Gypsy as well and were testing her out just like a couple other people. Like another girl ended up with Cleo and another girl ended up with Java. So like everybody was kind of trying all the different dogs. And anybody who would try Gypsy, Gypsy would guide them over to me and then sit down. Like she was like, I'm not working with you. This one's my girl. And she would do it every time without fail, no matter where I was in the kennel. She would guide them flawlessly through the obstacle course until she got to like halfway down where I was and then she'd go walk over to me and sit down and whoever was with her she would just pull them over to me like this is this is my mom I don't want to guide you this is my mom and so one girl Jeanette like really wanted Gypsy she really felt like Gypsy was her dog and the trainers had to end up being like I'm sorry Jeanette like Gypsy wants Molly like Molly is who Gypsy is going to and that's the most important thing like if the dog doesn't want to work for you they're not going to work for you and all gypsy wants is is molly and i don't know why gypsy felt like that i don't know what it was that made her come to me i don't know she always really loved kids so i don't know if it was just because i was the youngest and the most like kid like in the class or what, but she was so set on it. And I knew that, but I was still like, no, Cleo's my one. So the next morning, they bring us all back into the kennels and they s sat us down on these chairs and they put the chairs about five feet apart. So they spread all eight of us out down the line. And one by one, they would bring our dog out over to us and they'd be like, this is your new guide dog. And obviously you guys know, they brought Gypsy out on a leash to me and they said, can you guess which dog it is? And obviously like if I could see, I would have known it was Gypsy cause she was black and white, but I didn't have enough sight to really be able to see that. So they hand me the leash and the moment they hand me the leash, she jumps up on her back paws and like bites a fly out of the air. And then she jumps up onto my lap and, and like literally like sits in my lap. And I was like, I've got Gypsy <laughs> because none of the other dogs were as like, 
wild or spirited or feisty and fierce and sassy as Gypsy was. And that's what made her like at first like too much for me. Like I was like, I can't handle this sass. But I think our sass just like grew together over the years. And so I began training with her and it didn't take long before I realized like Gypsy knew what was up. The trainers knew what was up. As much as I was sad at first that I didn't get Cleo, Gypsy was 100% right for me. And she taught me so much in the seven years that she guided me. She taught me to be happy no matter what, you know, like she was just always happy and she would always like find the good in a situation. And I know that's like, I sound crazy talking about a dog like this, but she would, like she just found a way to like show you that there was good in everything. And she went through a lot with me, you know? She went through my vision loss, my bullying, my suicidal ideation and self-harm. She went through two school changes, so three different schools. My first boyfriend, my first love, my first breakup, graduating high school, going to prom, moving out on my own, getting my first job. She went through all of it with me. And it was, you know, I shared the story of how she passed away a few months ago and it was a very emotional story. I'll link it below. There's a lot of crying. So if you're not prepared to watch me cry a lot, don't watch. It, but when she left me, I really feel like she closed that chapter in my life. She closed that phase of like recovery, of mourning, of growth as a person and made way for the next chapter in my life of adulthood, of really growing into myself and building a future for myself with the next dog, which became the Gallop that we all know and love. And it took me a really long time to accept Gallop. I almost went home without him because he wasn't Gypsy. And you know, like the like first cut is the deepest, like that first love, you know, nobody will ever replace your first love. No dog will ever replace your first guide dog. And that is one of the scary realities of becoming a guide dog user is knowing that each dog plays such an extraordinary special role in your life, but they will have to leave you. And no, the next dog will never be the previous dog or the dog before that. And that was something I think getting a guide dog so young, I wasn't prepared for. But despite all of the pain that losing her was for me, I would do it all again. She was just so special and that's why I just wish you guys had had the opportunity to meet her and that's why I feel like it's important for me to share the stories and the moments that we shared together with you because she really was a big part of me becoming me and when I felt like I had no one, I had Gypsy and I wish that everybody had a Gypsy in their life. So if you're considering getting a guide dog or a service dog, it is gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be really hard. You're gonna get frustrated at times. It is truly like having a toddler with you 24 seven. It changes the way you do things, the way you think about things, the way you travel and navigate, but it is so, so worth it. If you're willing to put the love and the energy and the work and the effort into your dog, they will give you back a hundred times what you give them. So to Gypsy, thank you for being my first baby. Thank you for picking me when I didn't want to pick you. And thank you for being my princess diva dog who taught me to smile when things were really, really tough. Thank you for empowering me and for leading the way for Gallop in my life and for all my future dogs. Once again, happy International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Okay, I love you guys so very much and thank you for sticking with me. Love you.